Well, good morning. It looks like God has blessed us for a beautiful day for our church picnic after the service today. So I hope you can all stay and join us. Welcome to those visiting online. I hope you have a beautiful day wherever you are today as well. My name is Leanne, and I've been a long time, well, lifelong member of the United Church. I've been here at Trinity for about 10 years, and I'm thrilled to be in the pulpit today for you. We have a busy morning this morning. So uh, I'm going to quickly, the announcements have been running on the overhead, but I do have a couple of extra things. We'd like to congratulate our graduates who are graduating this June, and so I've got a list here of them. So Joey Woodcock, right there in our front. Joey is graduating from grade 8 at Straffordville Public School and will begin grade 9 at East Elgin Secondary School in the fall. And we're excited to see all the things you accomplish in the future, Joey. Congratulations. Uh, Kayla McClure, McClure has graduated. <laughs> from Northern College, from the three-year program of veterinary technology and wildlife rehabilitation. She has also accepted a full-time position and began working at Dryden at a vet clinic and with the Ministry of Natural Resources with their rabies program. So congratulations, Kayla. And finally, up there in our tech booth on her last day, Shailen Masson has graduated. <laughs> She's graduated from Wilfrid Laurier University from the User Experience Design Program, receiving her Bachelor of Design. Since graduating, Shailen has started a full-time position as a User Experience Designer at Canada Life. So congratulations, Shailen. Shailen. Um, after the happy news, I do have a sad announcement this morning. Um, we have learned that Helen Manicom passed away yesterday. Uh, we wish her family, Alton and the children, all the best at this time, and our prayers are with them. No details have been released yet on a service, uh, but they wanted us to know that that had happened. Now, I believe Norm Nealens had something he wanted to say this morning. Morning. Uh, I'd like to thank all the people that have volunteered to help with the move on Saturday. And uh, I know it's going to look like overkill, but I'm hoping for a lot of people for a short amount of time because it's uh, July 1st and everything. And I also want to invite all the movers to uh, my place uh, for pizza after. And I ask that you just let Tina know so we make sure we've got enough pizza. And while I've got the mic here, I'd like to say this all couldn't have been done without Marge and Cliff Martin. So I think they deserve a big hand in the show. Thank you. And I believe Kathy Elliott had an announcement to make. You probably saw that um, the Trinity Church Mice Foundation is going to be doing. Oh. I'm usually pretty loud anyhow. Um, the, um, you probably saw that the Christmas, the Trinity Church Mice uh, Stained Glass Group is uh, working on a Christmas tree memorial fundraiser. With, and um, we have five different pieces of stained glass that you could choose from. And we will take orders until the 1st of November. They are $40, and $30 of that goes to Trinity. $10 comes back to our group, because, of course, we have to have supplies to make all of the things that we have. And we're going to put up a Christmas tree here in the sanctuary for Advent and Christmas. Also, on each item that you choose, We'll have a tag saying who made the donation and who it's in memory of. And this and there will be order sheets and forms to fill out that will be in the parlor on the weekend. And during the week, Terry will have 
everything in the office and, and you can give your money to Terry. So we hope everybody will participate in this fundraiser. Thank you, Kathy. For thousands of years, indigenous people have walked on this land. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. As we come into worship, we recognize that Trinity United Church is located on the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, and Adirondack peoples who have cared for this land since time immemorial. The community of Ingersoll is represented by both the Between the Lakes Treaty of 1792 and the London Township Treaty of 1796. As we gather, we are mindful of the broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. As treaty people, we commit to listen, learn, and work towards justice and reconciliation. I'm gonna take a minute here to do something I haven't done before, and that's to do a bit of a movie review. I recently went to see the movie Bones of Crows. I don't know if you've heard of it before. It's a beautiful Canadian film written and directed by Dene Meti artist Marie Clements. It's won multiple awards around the world for the film and it's inspired by the true life story of a Cree matriarch named Aline Spears. The film follows Spears' life journey as she faces and fights against systemic racism, starvation and abuse. Appearing at different ages by different actors, she suffers must, much injustice and pain with extraordinary grace and strength. As a child, Spears and her siblings were forcibly removed from their parents while at home and put into the Indian residential school system. Spears, a gifted pianist, later wound up being part of the war effort as a code talker, using her ancestral language to Canada's, Canada's advantage at a time where everywhere else, settlers worked to eradicate it. Epic in scope and subject matter, Bones of Crows journeys from 1800s Turtle Crossing in Manitoba, home to the Brandon Residential School, to the Vatican in 2009, when a delegation of First Nations representative from Canada met with Pope Benedict XVI and numerous places in between. Clemens addresses the horrors and lasting effects of colonial practices on Indigenous people head on, without resorting to unnecessary graphic detail. The film contains scenes that may be triggering to some viewers, especially direct or intergenerational survivors of residential schools. This is one of those movies that as the credits rolled, no one in the theater moved or made a sound. The impact of what we had witnessed was profound and thought provoking and honestly humbling. It is not only a beautiful piece of cinematography, but a story that we all need to hear and internalize in order for true reconciliation to be found. Now I tried to find where the movie was showing for you. I was lucky enough to find it out on the East Coast when I was out, um, and it doesn't seem to be playing anywhere local at the moment, but most of the theaters do say that it will be coming, so keep your eyes open for that one.
well because that was a new hymn that the choir was going to sing for you and I forgot to mention that but it's nice to see some people joining in I've lit this candle this morning as a symbol of Christ which cannot be held back by distance which shines in each one of us no matter where we are please join me in the call to worship come into this sacred place to worship God Connected digitally or in person, may we know faith-filled community with one another. As people of this family of faith, we come for divine nurture. We come, O oh God, yearning for communion within your restorative spirit. When our energy and our enthusiasm wane, recharge our will that we may reach out into the world. When we question and doubt, immerse our souls within your wisdom and your guidance. When we worry and wonder ceaselessly, calm our hearts, settle our minds, and free our dreams. In our praying, in our engaging with scripture, and in our singing, may we be restored, renewed, and replenished with the way of Jesus. Amen. We'll say the opening prayer together. God of grace, grateful that your commitment to us is unwavering, we pull away from the activities, thoughts, and distractions of our life and our world for a moment of respite. We come this day to pause and devote our attention to the whisperings and ninglings from you. Open us fully, loving one, so that we may receive your message, so that this respite becomes the foundation of our day, so that day by day, your love for us becomes the foundation of our lives and our world, and so that when we leave this sacred space, we become sowers of your seeds of love. Amen. Sing hymn 288, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
for our Learning with All God's Children, I have a story today. So the kids are welcome to come forward, but all of the pages of the book are going to be on the overhead. So you don't need to worry about getting too close today. But I want to talk to you a little bit about angels that maybe walk amongst us. Do you know if there's angels that walk amongst us? Any ideas, Lydia? I think you're an angel. I think Joey's an angel. His mother might say different sometimes. I think we all... Some angels have fur. You're absolutely right. An angel is anybody or any pet that can come along and make a bad day seem good. So I'm going to tell you the story about Melinda and her very difficult day. It's a book by Eugenie Fernandez, and it was one of my daughter's favorites when she was little. So here we go. <coughs> Last night, Melinda couldn't sleep. Crumpled sheets, <clears throat> lumpy pillow, crumbs in her bed. It was awful. In the morning, she couldn't wake up. Time to get up, said her mother. Hurry, you'll be late for school. Melinda was late for school. In gym class, silly Harold punched her. Melinda punched him back, and they both had to sit on the bench. During recess, Melinda fell into a puddle. She got filthy, and she didn't care. At home, her mother told her to get into the tub. Melinda didn't want to get in the tub. I don't care if I'm dirty, she said. Her mother put her in the tub anyway. Melinda complained. You never listen. You never listen. You never listen to me. Oh, but the water was nice and warm. Melinda felt like a noodle, floating in a bowl of chicken soup. It was good. But good things never seemed to last long enough. Her mother took her out of the tub. You look like a prune, she said. I am a prune, said Melinda. Leave me alone. I can dry myself. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Such talk made her mother angry. Melinda the prune was sent to her room. She slammed the door. You can't come in. Don't you try to come in, she said. I don't like you anymore. I don't like anybody. Melinda grabbed her pillow and hugged it tightly. Why don't you love me better, she said. Then she crawled underneath her bed. It was dark. Melinda felt as if she were lost in space, and nobody even cared. I'm going away, she said, all the way to the other side of the world. The people there will love me, and they'll hug me when I feel sad. Meanwhile, Melinda's mother was baking cookies. She didn't feel angry anymore. She felt sorry for Melinda. Poor thing, she's had a difficult day. So her mother took milk and cookies up to Melinda's room. But Melinda was gone. Her mother looked everywhere. In the closet, behind the curtain, in the attic. She even looked in the laundry basket. But she didn't find Melinda because she didn't look under the bed. Mommy, said Melinda in a very little voice, here I am. Do you still love me? Do I love you, asked her mother. Why, I love you more than anything in the whole world. Then Melinda's mother crawled under the, under the bed, too. She hugged and kissed her little girl. Then she hugged and kissed her again. I was so scared when I couldn't find you, said her mother. Don't be scared, said Melinda. I love you, too. So after a difficult day, Melinda and her mother had milk and cookies underneath the bed. You can see, though, that was one of my daughter's favorites. And whenever she had a difficult day, she'd ask me to get under the bed with her. <laughs> But the thing is that God is always with us, even when it's dark under that bed. God is always with us, watching over us, and he sends us angels, like your mom, or a friend, or a pet, to come and comfort you in those sad times. So I'm going to send you off to Sunday school with that thought in your head, and we'll see you guys at the picnic today. I understand you guys are going to be setting up the picnic while we're busy. All right, thank you. Choir is now going to bless us with an anthem.
it's hard to speak after that. It's beautiful. The scripture reading this morning is taken from Genesis 21, verses 8 to 21, from the New International Version. Hagar and Ismael sent away. The child grew and was weaned, and on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a great feast. But Sarah saw the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my sorry, never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Early the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Bisheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down under a bowshot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and saw a well, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sunny out here today. Boy, would you move this stool into the shade for me? Here, here I think is best. Oh, I've had too much sunshine in my life. Thank you. Yes, this will do. Oh, my old body isn't what it used to be. But my mind is still sharp, thank God. God, do you know him? I know him. He has guided my life, my whole life since I was young. He has saved me many times. And I know that when I'm in the deepest, darkest times of my life, I need only open my eyes and I will see him and he will lead me where I need to go. Oh, you're laughing at the old woman. Well, I tell you, I've met him. He promised my son a nation. And here we are in Mecca and my son Ishmael is the leader. They call the people the Ishmaelites. He is known as the archer because his arms are strong and his aim is true. I see you still doubt me. Stay a while and I'll tell you my story. I was born in Egypt and as a young woman 
I moved with Abraham and Sarah into their household in the land of Canaan. Those were happy years, the first ones. I worked with Sarah. She was an old woman. Oh, probably about the age I am now well past her childbearing years. But she was good to me, and the work was easy, and I enjoyed my time. Now Abraham and Sarah had been told that he would have an heir to his nation. And yet Sarah, well, she doubted whether her body could carry a child. So she went to her husband, Abraham, and suggested he marry me so that I might bear them a child. And I did. I had a boy we named Ishmael, which means he hears. For many years, Ishmael grew at Abraham's knee and learned from him. But then the miracle that God had promised them came true, and Sarah found herself with child. And the child was born, and they named him Isaac. And now Isaac was Abraham's true heir. My son wasn't quite sure what to make of all of that. It was difficult for him. And when Isaac was weaned at about two years old, Abraham held a, held a big feast and a celebration that the boy was still strong and healthy. And Ishmael, as many siblings do, made fun of his little brother made his friends laugh at the child. And when Sarah saw this, she was not happy. She went to Abraham and told him that we should be sent away from the house. Well, Abraham was torn. Ishmael was his son too, and he had raised the boy. But then God came to Abraham and told him not to worry, that he had a plan for Ishmael and would give him a nation. Abraham, the next morning, took a skin of water and some bread and gave it to Ishmael and I and sent us out into the desert of Beersheba. I remember that first day so well. The heat from the sun was torturous. The sand was like molten lava and by the end of the day, our feet in our sandals were bloodied and blistered. At night, we huddled against a rock. And as the sun went down and the temperature dropped, we huddled together for warmth. In the morning, we had a bit of the bread and some water, and we started to wander again. Again, the heat and the sun was exhausting. We stumbled through that sandy wasteland. That night we sat and we drank the last of the water and ate the last bits of bread. I don't know how many days followed that. Days of torture, of thirst and hunger. Our mouths were dry and our lips were cracked. Then that day came when Ishmael could barely stand. I put my arms around the boy and tried to carry him forward. But by the end of the day, we were exhausted, and I laid him down under a bush for some shade, and he cried. And I knew that this was going to be his last day. There was no way we could carry on. I'm a mother, and I'm supposed to protect my child, and I could not do anything for him. I moved a ways away as I could not bear to hear him take his final breath. And I closed my eyes and I sobbed. And in that dark place that I sat, an angel of the Lord reached out to me and told me not to be afraid that God was with us that he had heard Ishmael crying and that he had a plan for Ishmael, that he would have a nation. God made me open my eyes 
And there before me was a well of sweet, cool water. And I filled our skin with water, and I took it back to Ishmael. Over the next several days, he grew stronger. And as word of the well spread, people began to come. And eventually, we joined a group of wanderers called Bedouin. And we traveled with them. And that's where Ishmael learned how to draw the bow and shoot so well. And here we are in Mecca. At the times that I was at the darkest of my life, God kept his promise. He promised a nation to Ishmael, and Ishmael was given that nation. He promised life for us, and we were given life. He has guided me. So you see, when you hear the ramblings of an old woman, listen closely, because there are words of wisdom. God is with you. He has a purpose for you. He has a plan for your life. And he will always be with you. Amen. are blessed to be a community that responds to needs, lifts one another, and gives to continue the work of this church. We recognize that many of us give our time and talents to this congregation, and we appreciate the support of those of you who watch online and who donate so that we may continue our services. We will now take up our offering.
God of life, who blesses us so abundantly, take these gifts we give and use them for the life work of this church, of our community, our country, and our world. We ask this in your name, Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask you all to sit because we have another beautiful anthem from our choir. are truly blessed to have such an amazing choir. Thank you so much, Susan, Kenny, and all of you for that. Uh, let's take a few moments now to pass the peace. May the peace be with you.
Holy Spirit, Creator, Loving Father, we wrestle sometimes with doing the right thing. We struggle waiting for your path for us to be revealed. We are often lost in a wilderness of our own making, letting anger or prejudice or fear guide our words and our decisions. Lead us gently, Lord, to your wisdom, to an acceptance that our happily ever after isn't the stuff of fairy tales, but rather is the unique life and road and journey you give to each of us. May we recognize that our relationship with you, our acceptance of your gracious love and your plan for our lives requires our faith and our patience. We ask our blessings on those who are suffering, who are sad or lost in the wilderness. We send up special prayers for the family of Helen Manicom at this very sad time for them. We call for the end of war, of prejudice, of racial profiling that lead our countries away from love. We hold in, in prayer those who are sick or in hospital and need your attention, Lord. We ask now in the silence of our prayers for those we hold dear. Loving Father, we praise you now with a prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. seated. I've been asked to tell you a little bit about the picnic today. The food will be set up in the boardroom and you can set up your chairs outside and uh, there are some tables in the shade so if you need a little shady spot please feel free to move into the shady spots there. And I've been asked to do a quick grace so how many here know Johnny Appleseed? Alrighty. Oh, the Lord is good to me, and so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord is good to me, Johnny Apple. 
have a seat. Oh, Amen. Now I have a little, a little story for our benediction today. A woman woke up one morning and looked in the mirror, and she had only three hairs left on her head. And she said, well, I guess I'll wear a braid today. And she braided her hair and went out and had a wonderful day. The next morning she woke up and looked in the mirror, and she had two hairs left on her head. And she said, well, I guess I'll part it in the middle this morning. And she did that and went out and had a wonderful day. The third day she woke up, and you guessed it, she had one hair left on her head. And she said, well, I guess today's the day for a ponytail. And she put it in a ponytail and went out and had a wonderful day. On the last day she woke up, and she looked in the mirror, and there were no hairs left on her head. And she said, thank you, God. I was running out of things to do with my hair. <laughs> now, attitude is everything. Let's be grateful for the things God has given us, count our blessings both small and large, and recognize that we are part of a greater plan. And let's go out and have a wonderful day. Amen. <laughs>